Hi everyone, Dr. Harm here. Today I'd like to talk about the range of anesthesia options that are offered to patients by surgeons that depend on the type of procedure offered, the number of procedures offered, as well as the past medical history and desires of the patient. So the first is called local anesthesia. And that local anesthesia is simply numbing of the area of treatment. And that could be with topical agents, creams and gels. That's commonly done prior to injectable procedures such as hyaluronic acid filler or laser treatment procedures like the CO2 laser. Injecting local anesthesia that can be short acting, meaning about one to two hours or long acting, six to eight hours, is also a good option for certain surgical procedures that may be can be done without the need of sedation or having a patient sleepy for the procedure. And oftentimes epinephrine is mixed in with this local in order to reduce bleeding associated with the procedure. The next step up, and this can be done with local anesthesia, is oral anesthesia. Things like relaxing agents such as Valium. They might be a good option for an individual who would be awake but just wants to relax a little bit during the procedure and they can tolerate it otherwise. Next are increasing levels of sedation. And it's important to know that when we talk about these levels of sedation, anesthesia exists on a spectrum, so there's not firm delineation of one type versus another. There are just different interventions that may be required in order to maintain a certain level of sedation. And one option is IV sedation, utilizing a mixture of medications, or sometimes just one medication to make an individual sleepy, and you can make them lightly sleepy or deeply sleepy. Some patients utilizing IV sedation may need to be so sleepy they need help breathing in which a breathing tube would need to be placed. And other patients may not just get IV sedation medications, but also need to breathe gases that help them stay asleep, in which case, again, a breathing tube would be required. Now, I'm not an anesthesiologist. It's important to have a discussion with an anesthesiologist for more detailed information about what kind of anesthesia can be offered and it's typically a conversation between the surgeon and the anesthesiologist based on the patient's past medical history, the surgeries that will be done, as well as the patient desires. They all factor into creating an anesthesia plan that is safe and can be most effective for the patient, for the surgeon and the anesthesiologist.